Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving advent of code problems for 2018. This is day 22, part two in Java. So day 22 uh, was pretty easy in part one. We were basically told to find the total risk factor. In day 22, we're given a little bit steeper of a requirement. We have to search for our target. So we're here, our targets out in the distance somewhere. We have to search for our target and find the best path to our target given these kind of hazardous uh, situations, these hazardous regions. Um, and basically in these regions, we're told that we have three different tools we can use or three different uh, combinations of tools. We can either have climbing gear out, we can have a torch out, or we can have nothing out. We can have any of those three. Now, depending what region you're in, uh, you're only allowed certain things in those regions. So what that means is um, you can change things in a region or you can hop around to other regions around you but all of these things take time. So if you're in a re if you're in a dot, you know you can move to any dots that are near you easily because dots have compatible gear. Um, not all gear is compatible though, so you've got to find the best path um, given the fact that this all takes time. Traveling from one position to an adjacent, um, either left, right, up, or down, is one minute. And switching gear in the position you're at is seven minutes. So it's pretty expensive to switch gear. So instead of kind of blabbing on about the problem, I'm gonna go ahead and just solve it for you, hopefully, and um, we can just explain it as we go. So I'm gonna start with what I did in part one, and let's just say uh, here we implemented hash map. I'm gonna implement star, I'm gonna import star this time. We're gonna be using a good deal more than just hash map in this part of the solution. Um, but basically, we also want to store off a couple more things. We want to store off search x, which is going to be target x, times 2. Search y, which is going to be target y, times 2. So basically, um, the problem states that we can step over the boundaries. Like you'll notice, uh, do, 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 do. here for example, x gets beyond the target in the y direction. So we can do that in this problem. Um, y times two, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> I just tried it and it worked. And then I tried to narrow it down and times two is the right amount. I kind of got lucky there a little bit if I'm being honest. Um, but basically, if x is your search space, um, x has to be 28 for this to work. If you make it any lower, it won't work. So you have to go as far as 28 out in the x direction. All right, so I'm gonna change a couple of things about the previous solution. Um, because I'm gonna use these erosion um, values in other places, I'm just gonna make them into a string to integer, which will kind of simplify things a little bit. And then I'm gonna use a key to kind of narrow, to summarize them. So private static string key. So given an X and a Y, I'm gonna return X dot two string. Plus I'll just stick an underscore between them. You can have number confusion if you don't do that, like 11 and 1 would look like 1 and 11, which is no good. Y to string. All right, so that's what our key is going to look like. And then our erosion level function gets simplified a little bit, which is kind of nice. The key is just going to be the key <coughs> of xy. So if our key is not contained in the erosion levels, then we're just going to um, go ahead and put it. So put key, and we don't need to use nested maps anymore. We can just say the value. So that's gonna be this thing right here. And then we can just get back value at key. All right, that's pretty nice. Now our geogra geological index stays the same. However, after this problem, um, I have something I want to ask anyone who knows something about Java um, about. I had a big problem in this one and I spent a long time trying to troubleshoot it and it turned out to be something very, very subtle. So I have a question for any Java aficionados out there, if that's the right word. But basically, I'm going to now explicitly um, talk about risk. So if, you want, if you're a Java aficionado and you'd like to hear that question, please skip to the end. Return erosion level, hopefully I'll remember, at xy modulo three. So that's the actual risk value. All right, so let's go ahead and make some other kind of little helper functions. I'm gonna make one called possible tools, 
which given an XY will tell us in an array of strings what tools are possible. So if the risk, and this is just all specified in the problem, if the risk is zero, that means we're in a rocky region, I believe. And if we're in a rocky region, there might be a cleaner way to do this in more modern versions of Java, I don't remember. I've been doing a lot of C sharp, so I don't really, my Java is not prime as I learned today. Um, so if it's zero, we're gonna do those possible tools. If it's one, our possible tools are climbing gear or neither. I'm just using characters to represent these. Otherwise, it's gotta be two, and we have to have the torch or neither. All right, nothing too wild. Okay, so basically what we're gonna do to solve this problem, what I ended up doing was I ended up treating this whole thing like a big old graph. And in this graph, you could move from this region to neighboring regions if they supported the tool that you were on in that region. Or you could move from this region to the other possible tool or back. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build up a graph that kind of represents all those different edges, all those different nodes and edges, and then just do a good old fashioned Dijkstra search on it. I think I did a Dijkstra a few days ago, um, and, and the solution for a few days ago. Um, but basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use strings because Java doesn't seem to have first class tuples, um, which is always something I really miss when I don't have it. But anyways, we're gonna say format node and we're just gonna take in, oh, my Python was showing for a second there. We're gonna take in an integer x, integer y, and a string of the tool you're at. And what's that gonna look like? Well, it's kinda of gonna look like our key up here, honestly. <coughs> except we have a little bit extra, we gotta add a tool on the end. So a node is just gonna be the combination of x, y, tool. That's how we're gonna represent them all. Now let's also make a little function to insert an edge into a graph. So private string void insert edge into a hash map, which is gonna be our graph. So it's gonna have a node and that thing is gonna also have a hash map of nodes, which are strings and integers. So our graph is gonna be a mapping from a node to the nodes around it. And the node around it is gonna also have the weight of that node tacked on. That's just gonna be our graph. And then we'll take node one, we'll take node two, we'll take a weight. All right, nothing too wild. So if not graph contains key, so if node one hasn't been seen yet, we gotta be safe and we gotta say g.put at node one, new hash map. And then at that point we can say g.get node one dot put node two wait. Okay, and basically we're gonna do the same thing for node two. This is gonna be a bi-directional insert. So it's gonna say node one maps to node two and node two maps to node one because you can go in either direction and there are reasons to backtrack in this problem, which is interesting. Um, so if G doesn't contain two, then we're gonna put two, a new hash map. And then when we go down here, we're gonna put one in a value under two. All right. Next, we're gonna need a way to represent a point. And basically the reason we need this is because Java doesn't seem to have a tuple. Um, it looks like you can use some things that are out there, but it turned out just to be easier for me to define this. So integer x, integer y. I, didn't, I also didn't remember having to make this static to be able to use new in this class. I thought that was really interesting. C Sharp's definitely a little different uh, than Java, no matter what people say point x, y, and we're gonna say this dot x equals x, and this dot y equals y, and that's all, oops, this dot y equals y. And that's all our point is gonna be. Pretty straightforward, just a bag of data. So now why I made this was, I wanna be able to do things like say private, static, list of point. I wanna be able to return a list of these things. For example, around an XY pair. So to do that, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna say a list 
of point, which we'll call results equals a new array list. All right, and then we're going to say things like if the erosion levels, so if it's in the bounds of the things we care about, the, the problem tells us we can't step below zero um, in any direction, contains key. And what's the key? The key is gonna be x minus one y. And that's one of the reasons right here that I made the key just a string because this reads a lot better than the alternative. Add new, new point x minus one y. So that'd be an example of one of the things that could potentially be around a point. We can also have x plus one y. We can also have <clears throat> y minus one x. I guess it'd be x, y minus one, if you're talking about it in the order that these points come in. All right, and then in the end, we're just gonna return results. So that'll let us get the points that are valid around a given point. Okay, and then later we're gonna have to do a Dijkstra search, but I'm not gonna do that right, right now. Um, instead, I'm gonna go back to our main and get cracking on what we wanna do inside of our main. <coughs> So uh, basically inside of main, what we wanna do is we wanna say, well, we still wanna do this basically um, so that we can populate out um, the erosion levels. We no longer care about the total risks. I'm gonna delete that part. And instead of doing up to targets, I'm gonna do to search values just to give a little bit of a buffer around, um, a double buffer in fact. Um, and we don't actually care about doing modules anymore. So basically all this is doing is looping through our search space and filling out the erosion level memo table. That's it. So then we're gonna build up a hash map from string to hash map of string integer. Pop quiz, what's this? Yep, that's right, it was one of our graphs. That's just gonna be a new hash map. That is good job, good, good quizzing. Um, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna research the exact same search space, nothing too wild there. So let's start with our loops here. I know this is kind of ugly, I'm sorry. It probably pains you if you're a better Java developer than I am, but that's okay. Um, string tools are gonna be the possible tools at X and Y. And at any point in any time, we can navigate from ourselves back to ourselves, switching tools at a cost of seven. So insert edge, graph, format node, x, y, and that'd be tools at zero. And then we have format node. Uh, so back to ourselves, x, y, but that's tools at one. So it's technically, as far as this graph's concerned, a different node and that costs seven to do. It's an expensive operation. Hopefully we don't do that a whole lot. Then we're gonna say for each tool in our tools. And this is really hideous, I'm, I'm very sorry. Fortunately, these loops are pretty tight. I mean, around can be four values tops, tools is two values. Four point in around x, y. Um, if tool equals the possible tools at point dot x, point dot y, zero, or if the tool equals possible tools at one. So in other words, if we found a neighbor whose tool uh, matches the possible tools, that we're looking at. If we find an intersection between the possible tools, <clears throat> then we're gonna do another edge insert. Okay, and this insert is gonna have a cost of one, and it's gonna go from X using tool to point at X, point at Y, also using tool, and again, that just has a cost of one. So nothing too wild there. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another hash map of string to integer. This is gonna be the return, the distances, the min distances, which 
we're going to calculate using Dijkstra, Dijkstra's famous algorithm. And Dijkstra will take in a graph, and it'll take in our source node, which is going to be 0, 0. The problem tells us we start at 0, 0 with a torch. Torch is T. All right, and then what we want to print out in the end is our result is we want to print the distances.get format node. So get our target, target X, target Y, also at a torch. The problem tells us that to find our buddy who's lost in this cave, that's the overall problem, we need to have a torch lit when we get to the end. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and let's implement Dijkstra's famous algorithm again. This algorithm proves to be so useful, I really like it. So what does it look like? It looks like public or private, whatever, it doesn't matter. Private, static, hash map, string, integer, Dijkstra. Dijkstra is going to take in our graph as the first thing. So remember, a graph is a string to a hash map of a string to an integer. That's our graph. And then it's going to take in a string of our source. I almost fit there. Oh, well, whatever. String of our source. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to track distances. So that's going to be a hash map from string to integer. Dist equals new hash map. All right, and in the end, we're going to return dist, of course. And we're done. No, I'm just kidding. That'd be awesome if that's how easy it was. Um, the interesting thing is dist. We can immediately put into dist. Ooh, dist. Hmm. Is that a real thing that I've typed somewhere? No, OK. Um, we can put in source to zero. The distance from source to source is always zero. Easy to understand. All right, now it's going to get really fun. We're going to use a queue of string. We'll call that queue. Great names. I'm just uh, implementing this based on Wikipedia pseudocode that's out there. This is going to be a new priority queue. Um, which is going to have our graph size. And then we're going to make a new comparator, compare using weight and dist. And that's going to be kind of the key to calculating our mins and maxes more quickly. If you remember a couple days ago, I think it was day 20, I used Scala, and I just kind of brute force searched for it, and it was good enough for that problem. For this problem, it is certainly not good enough. Um, and then I'm going to use a hash set of string track what we've seen so far. This is probably unnecessary, but I did find that it sped up the solution a little bit, so I'm going to do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for string v, this is just kind of the initialization part, key set. So for each uh, vertex, for each node in the graph, if not v equals source, so for each node that is not the source, Dist dot put v integer dot max value. So in other words, um, for every node that's not the source, as far as we know, it's infinity away from the source. We're not going to use infinity though. We're just going to use integer max value for now. Q dot add v, and also put it in the queue, which is queue. Queue is basically just to process. All right, so I could go into the comparator, but I'm not going to yet. I'm going to finish off this algorithm. So while q.size does not equal zero, string of u equals q.pull. So let's get the best value we've seen. So that is kind of nice. So we're going to track that we've seen u at this point. We're going to say for string v in graph dot get u dot key set. So in other words, get me all of the neighbors of u. If scene contains key v. So we've already seen v, we've got to continue. We don't care. Otherwise, let's calculate an alternative distance. So what's the alternative distance going to be? It's going to be the distance to u plus the distance from u to v. 
If you look at Dijkstra, that is uh, the kind of the heart of it right there. That calculation is what figures it out. I forget the actual intuition for that. I kind of just blindly implemented this, but um, I plan on kind of studying up on it a little more after the season's over. So if this distance that we found, this alternative distance, is better than the one that we currently have, then we'll track it. And we will add it back. <laughs> we'll add V, the neighbor, back into our to process. So we're going to say later, you know, there might be something better for this guy. So try it again. Okay, and that's all looking good so far. So let's go ahead and let's write our custom comparator. So this is going to be a public static class. Compare using weight. And this is going to implement comparator of string. So this is a custom comparator on strings. Kind of cool. Private hash map string integer d. So these are just going to be our distances. So public compare using weight. And we can take this um, distances in. <clears throat> d just equals dist. And then let's go ahead and let's override our actual compare. And for the intents and purposes of this problem, we're just going to say if d.getA is less than d.getB, A is less than B. Otherwise, A is greater than B. All right, so that'll work for this problem. We probably want to implement um, the zero case as well. Um, we can't just use subtraction here because we're using, we, we insert a bunch of max value onto the integer, which would make us overflow if we tried to do things in, inappropriately. So that's no bueno. Um, but anyways, that should be it for our comparator. That should be it for everything, I think. So let me go ahead and let me run this and see how I did. So this is day 22, part two. And I got a couple of errors, that's good. Um, 58 is the first error, so let's see if I can just look at it and figure out what's wrong. Return new string, do, 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 do. I don't see anything obvious at first. Let me see, what's the error actually saying? 58, private string void insert edge. Oh, that's, that's a different line. Oops, 58's here. <laughs> private string void insert edge. This should probably just be private static void. All right, let's try that again. Do, 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 do. If scene contains key. Um, oh, scene dot contains key should just be scene.contains. On sets, you just ask, does it contain? Because there's not really a key value pair distinction. But anyways, if we run it, we get 168, which is the correct answer. So for those of you uh, Java aficionados who stuck around with me, um, in part one, I originally implemented it saying this. And in part one, it worked even though target X and target Y are included. In part two, I get the wrong answer. I have absolutely no idea why. Um, why is this different? Is it because target X and target Y are static up here? Is it using like some kind of reference equality? If so, why in part one does it work? Well, if you're a Java expert, I really thank you for your help and advice. Um, this is probably kind of making you cringe a little bit if you're familiar with better ways of doing things in Java, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this somewhat.